Good morning and welcome to St Mary's West Horsley and our service of Holy Communion on the 18th of October. My name is Andy Lewis and I'm delighted that you're joining us today, whether as a regular or for the very first time. You're very welcome. It's now been over six months that we've been creating these online services, which have become such a key part of our lives at St Mary's. And as usual, I'm joined by folk from homes all over the Horsleys to lead us in worship today. Thanks to all of you for taking part this week. Today, we are continuing our series on the ruthless elimination of hurry, a book by John Mark Comer that challenges us to overcome one of the biggest obstacles to a close walk with God, the modern world's obsession with hurry. This morning, we come to the last of the four disciplines that John Mark suggests. They all begin with S, making it so much easier to remember. To recap, we started with silence and solitude. Then Peter talked to us about Sabbath. And last week, Sue spoke about the need for simplicity. And today, our rector, will, Phil, will talk to us about the final S, slowing finding ways to deliberately practising slowing down in our daily lives. I'm sure that Phil will give us some good pointers to areas where, without thinking about it, we inevitably look to race rather than reduce, to hurry when we could slow down. So let us bow our heads in prayer and ask that God would speak to us this morning. Heavenly Father, we join together from our various homes coming together to worship you today. We ask that as we sing your praises this morning, you would lift our hearts to give you the glory. That as we listen to Ed and Phil teach us, you would give us open minds and soft hearts to hear the word you have for us today. And be with us by your Holy Spirit in each of our places of worship right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to sing together before we have a short prayer of confession to prepare ourselves for communion later. Over to Helen and Toby with Amelia, Rosie and Fionn to sing So Amazing God with us. If you can, please stand to join in. I'm sure that you noticed that we sang there about our God who saves us. He is the sin-forgiving, people-freeing, strong and mighty, so amazing God. And we sang that Jesus came to earth to die for us. And in the last verse, we sang that God's Holy Spirit helps us live like Jesus and follow in his way. 
But you know what? We so often get it wrong. We don't live like Jesus every day, but God is always ready to forgive us. So let us pray together a short prayer, saying we are sorry for when we get it wrong and don't follow Jesus as the Lord of our life. The words will come up on the screen, so please join with me now as we say, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, so often we hurry through life and we get so distracted and lose our focus on you. We know that you are the King of Kings and yet often we treat you as far less than that. We know that you are holy and yet we sometimes pretend that what we do wrong is okay. But today, Lord, we are sorry. Forgive us for the times we do not love you with all our heart and for when we love ourselves more than others. We know we are selfish and proud. We know there are things we cling on to that you don't like. Help us to turn from them and live better lives, lives that please you. Thank you that on the cross Jesus died for each and every one of the sins we've committed. And thank you that by his death we are forgiven and made new. Amen. Now Ed, our youth minister, is going to bring his message for this morning and then Amelie will read Psalm 1 before Phil joins us to teach us more about focusing on God. Oh, when I'm rushing around, I always find that I miss things or I don't really understand things very well. Like if I tried to read a book as fast as Superman, I wouldn't really understand that much or remember anything from it. Or how about when I rush around from place to place, I miss seeing the awesome world around me that God has made. And this actually reminds me about our friendship with God. It's so easy to be rushing around because we're trying to do lots of things in a day. We're doing stuff like school, work, things at home, hobbies, homework, sports, watching our favourite TV show and loads, loads more. So we rush from one thing to the next until we finally crash into bed. When we live like this, it isn't good for us and it isn't the way that God made us to live. It's like our life is this jug and this rice represents all the things that we can fill up our lives with, like uh, the hobbies and sort of uh, school, work, all those kind of things. The oranges represent the things that God can use to grow us so that our lives are more the way that it's meant to be, like spending time talking with him in prayer reading the Bible, going to church, spending time with other Christians. All too often, we fill up our lives with all the stuff that actually when we finally realise, we haven't thought about God, there isn't room for him. We can't fit him in. Now, perhaps you hear that and you think, yikes, that's me. Well, God loves us and he will forgive us for this. But the thing is, he won't just leave us there. He will then help us change. He'll help us to start with the most important thing, him. And then he'll help us fill up our lives around him. So that we keep him at the centre of our lives as the most important. Now, Phil is going to come in a bit and share more about this. Uh, but before that, we're going to be having our reading. So if you want to get your Bibles ready for that, that'd be great. Children, there is an activity you can be doing during the talk. So I encourage you to give that a go. As for me, I need to stop rushing around and uh, take some time to think about actually what God's telling me needs to change. 
so that my life can look more like that. So, guys, I'll see you all soon. Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff, that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Thank you, Emily, so much for that reading. Now, when I was uh, 19 or so, my friend and I, Simon, uh, went travelling on a year out and we uh, ended up eventually in Australia. We landed in Sydney and worked our way up the east coast, heading for Cairns. Uh, and we'd always wanted to go scuba diving, but by that point in our trip, our money was beginning to run out. But all was not lost because my mum had given me a credit card that was only to be used in emergencies. But we uh, talked about it and thought, well, we're only probably going to be in Australia uh, once and be able to uh, dive once. So really, this is kind of an emergency situation. And so we signed up for our uh, learning to scuba dive paddy course. And um, the first uh, two or three days we were actually spent in a swimming pool, learning how to use all the equipment, uh, learning uh, what to do in an emergency underwater, uh, learning to uh, breathe and move slowly in order to conserve our uh, oxygen. Now, uh, once we'd done all the, the training and had a medical, we were then uh, taken to the dive boat and we headed out to sea. And once we got to the, the dive site, we obviously kitted up, did one of those sort of backward rolls uh, off the side of the boat, got ourselves settled, and then we uh, descended. And uh, we breathed and moved slowly, soaking up the astonishing beauty of the Great Barrier Reef. We swam amongst these great shoals of, of fish, taking in the vibrant colours that were there. Uh, one night we did a, a night dive. And one of the most amazing things was, was swimming amongst a, a family of, of turtles, just seeing how gracefully they moved. And it was uh, such an amazing time. It's something that lives on vividly uh, in my memory, even to this day. And over the, uh, the last few weeks here at St Mary's, we've been making our way through uh, this book. It's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by the author and pastor John Mark Comer. Um, and uh, we've been seeing that, uh, that hurry is the greatest uh, enemy to our spiritual lives and to our faith, much more uh, than the, the sort of the hot debates and hot topic, topics that are going on in the culture wars uh, that we see uh, around us, or our country is sort of moving away from its Christian heritage. And, and so far, we've been given a, a few uh, sort of practices or tools to help us uh, lead the fight back against the, uh, the hurry that we experience and struggle with uh, so often. Uh, and they were uh, silence and solitude, Sabbath uh, and simplicity. So the importance of, sort of carving out regular time to be uh, silent and on our own, uh, stilling ourselves physically and emotionally, to be able to hear God speak to us uh, and to listen. To ensure that we are honouring God by setting aside that one day a week to uh, delight in and to enjoy and to gather with other Christians on a Sunday morning, uh, to worship God, to, uh, to then spend time recreating and restoring ourselves. 
And last week we were reminded about the importance of simplicity, letting go of the need to buy stuff and more stuff and multiple things of the same stuff, trying to uh, live more lightly and freely and limit the impact on the environment we have. And remembering that in learning how to uh, live simply, we may well be enabling others around the world to just simply live. And this morning we're thinking about that final uh, practice, that final tool in our fight back against hurry, and that is slowing, physically slowing the, 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 the pace that we move at, trying to slow down the, the pace that we think at, uh, giving ourselves a fighting chance to be able to become like that tree planted by streams of living water that bears fruit in season, is secure and well nourished. Now at the moment it seems like busy is almost a, a badge of honour. It's a sign of success or importance or the, the sort of the vitality that uh, we have to the, uh, the success of the organisation that we're in. Busy means that we're interesting, we've got lots on, lots of hobbies, and our language even seems to sort of celebrate busyness. We might say we've relished it, yeah, you know, life is a bit relentless uh, at the moment. And one, uh, something that made me uh, laugh quite recently was I heard uh, a story about uh, some people who've been buying e-bikes. Uh, they are apparently uh, limited to something like 16 miles an hour, uh, but there have been uh, people that have been sort of overriding that limitation on their speed in order that they can go faster. And if ever I thought that, you know, it was a metaphor that was sort of a picture of the culture that uh, we live in at the moment, it was that. You know, I've got this thing, it goes quite fast, but I wanna go faster. And so I'm gonna override the limits that were put there for our safety. And we do live at such a pace so often, don't we? You know, we don't live like that scuba diver, moving slowly, breathing deeply, absorbing everything, spotting beauty and grace in the everyday. You know, we live more like jet skiers, skimming across the surface of life at great speed, at times just trying to hold on. And, uh, and if as, as Christians, our values uh, are about living life with Jesus, growing in maturity and, and growing towards love and joy and peace, then our diaries and our sort of family organizers and calendars will, will reflect that and reveal our rule of life. Now, whether that is uh, the truth or not, we can sort of do an audit on to help us understand that. Uh, and so what I would encourage you to do perhaps this, this afternoon or this evening is to uh, take a look at your diary and, and your, your calendar and uh, look at the commitments that you've got booked in for the next uh, days and weeks and months. So have a look now, is your quiet time planned in every day? Is gathering with Christians on a Sunday morning, uh, even the, the sheer inconvenience of that time, is it a non-negotiable in your diary? Is the church's monthly prayer meetings on the fourth Thursday of the month, is that penned in? Is time giving to some of the church's ministry there as well? And uh, you know, I'm sure we will all have imperfections in this, but on the basis of what your diary and your calendar looks like, does it reveal that your priority is doing life with Jesus and following his way? Now, in my experience as a Christian and frankly as a human being, uh, I rarely slip into good habits and practice and uh, practices by accident. I do slip into bad habits really quite easily. Um, but I have to have a real intention uh, when it comes to putting in place uh, things that are going to help me to grow and mature. I need ideas, I need goals, I need motivation, uh, and it is a battle. 
Now, what I've learned this year is that the spoils of war are worth it. So how can we uh, slow down? Now, I'm going to give you five ideas. There are about 13 or 14 in the chapter on slowing in this book, but I can't cope with that. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, five of the, the ones that I'm trying to uh, work on uh, at any one time because I'm quite simple and, uh, and I can cope with that. So the first one is drive slower. Okay, there is a link to uh, how fast we physically move and how we are feeling inside how our well-being is. So why don't you drive at the speed limit? Not over it because that's dangerous, not under it because that's boring and annoying. Uh, but if the speed limit is 30 as you drive through Ockham Village uh, around the corner uh, on the Ockham Road uh, north, then drive at 30. And when you get onto the quick roads like the A3 or the motorways, then uh, can I encourage you to deliberately drive in the inside lane, in the slow lane, with all the drivers uh, who are in Honda Jazzes. Um, it, I tried that and once I got over the sort of everybody is overtaking me uh, I actually found it quite liberating and now I enjoy it uh, and I know that you'll end up uh, arriving at your destination maybe 10 or 15 minutes later than you would have done but you arrive in such a better place um, so number one drive slowly uh, second thing to do is make your uh, smartphone into a dumb phone and uh, this isn't a new one, and, and I have heard about it late last year, and um, I shared it with you then in the run up to Christmas. Um, but, uh, you know, our phones are the greatest enemy to our attention. They, they are uh, the, the thief of our attention. Uh, they cause so much anxiety and stress, uh, but they are useful, of course, and so they need managing. So here are some uh, top tips. So delete all your social media apps from your phone. Turn off all the notifications from like the news alerts, things like that. Get rid of those little red dots. Uh, keep the useful apps. So uh, Ringo is staying on my phone and, um, and so is the BBC uh, Sport app. I can't do this all at once. I've got to ease my way uh, into it. Uh, now I do want to say that I'm very aware that uh, there are some of us here at St Mary's who are uh, isolated physically and so actually our uh, social media apps are a way of being able to stay connected with the world and I want to uh, just uh, say that I understand that and, and I hope you hear that. But I think you also know the point that I'm trying to make about how addictive these phones are and that social media is a huge cause of that. So if you're able to, then delete them from your phone. Now, I'm still on Facebook, I'm still on Twitter, but I just access it from my laptop and, and try to do that at set times um, because you know, there is still great use um, in them. So uh, make your uh, smartphone into a dumb phone, then uh, continuing on with the subject of phones, parent your phone. Um, very simply, put your phone to bed. Put it to bed about half past eight, put it on airline mode, turn it off, put it in a basket, leave it in the kitchen um, and uh, don't take it to bed, leave it there. And if you're one of those people that say, yeah, but I use my phone as an alarm clock, buy an alarm clock. And much more controversially, perhaps, um, leave it there until after you have had your morning quiet time. You know, if you want to have a strong start to your day, then drink deeply from the well of scripture and prayer, filling your mind and your soul with truth and grace and forgiveness and faithfulness. You know, then you can enter the frenetic and fractured and perpetually offended world that we live in from a place of peace and calm and security. And if you think I'm talking about uh, mobile phones a bit too much, then can I encourage you, if you have Netflix, to watch the, um, the TV documentary, The Social Dilemma. It is terrifying and fascinating in equal 
measure and I'd encourage you to watch it with your teenage children. So thinking about uh, watching things, I've just commended you to watch something, but uh, generally I think a good thing to do is to watch less TV. And I think, you know, John Mark Homer uh, in, in his book, he says, you know, seriously, if you're a follower of Jesus, then um, there's very little modern TV that we can actually watch. You know, we are pumping into our homes, into our sitting rooms, TV that fills our minds with fornication and wildly unrealistic portrayals of romance and beauty and sex. Uh, graphic images of violence and seeking revenge of you know, TV shows that make divorce look like it's easy and damage free, that glamorizes the pursuit of wealth. And this isn't about being legalistic because you know, I've just mentioned one show, there are some really great television shows around. But set yourself a time limit, be really picky and choosy about what you watch and guard that and guard what your children watch. Parents, we are gatekeepers of what enters our home. And the scriptures remind us that we are to guard our hearts for they are the world spring of life. And finally, uh, meditate upon the scriptures. You know, as Psalm 1 reminds us, blessed is the one who meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. Blessed is the one who fills their minds with the beauty of the scriptures, with truth, with the voice of the Holy Spirit. They are like trees planted by streams of water that are fruitful, weathering the storms of life, growing and maturing. So there are just uh, five ways to begin to uh, slow down and to rediscover your soul. Why don't you do an experiment and just pick one or two of those and try them this week. I know that they won't all apply to you. They're ones that resonated with me, uh, but why don't you uh, give it a go? Think uh, what are the changes that you might need to make uh, this week? And I think, you know, if we're Christians, we have to ask ourselves, do we really believe that Jesus' teachings, that his way of life is the best way to live? Or do we think that we know better? That we know some shortcuts? Do we know some teachings and commands that we can just get rid of because they'll give us a more comfortable and convenient life? You know, I fear that many Christians in the West would uh, answer uh, with the latter. But what about you and I here at St. Mary's, guys? Do we believe Jesus? And are we prepared to shape our lives around him? Hurry is the greatest threat to our spiritual lives, but we've been given the tools to begin that fight back, to change the way that we live and begin to experience uh, the life that we're called to live. Not an easy life, it's certainly not a convenient life, but it's a rich, fulfilling and liberating life. And too many of us live life like we are jet skiing when we're called to a life of scuba diving, slowing down, absorbing uh, God's beauty, learning to live the way that he designed us to live, spotting little acts of grace, becoming like trees planted by streams, fruitful in every season, rediscovering our souls. Amen. Thank you, Phil, for a challenging talk as ever. We all need to slow down to practice the presence of God, to let our souls catch up with our bodies. So right now we're going to take a bit of time to do that. Let's be quiet and listen for a moment to what God has been saying to us. Don't be afraid of the silence and reflect on what Phil has been saying. What spoke to you this morning? And now we will stay in a quieter space and we will sing a song rededicating ourselves to God. Let's stand to sing, I will offer up my life, and then Katie Windridge will lead us in prayer. Spirit and truth pouring out the oil. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you reign sovereign over all. You are awesome in power and majesty, and we worship you. Thank you that you are always with us in times of joy and in times of sadness. Through every hardship and loss, you are there. I pray that as we quieten our minds now and turn to you in prayer, that your Holy Spirit would come and fill us afresh with that truth and assurance. Fill us up, Holy Spirit, so that we may be emptied again, being lights for you in this world. Thank you, God, for all your blessings in our lives and for all the incredible ways you reveal yourself to us day to day. Help us not to make our lives so busy and rushed that we miss you, God. We miss hearing you when you try and talk to us. We miss witnessing you at work in our lives and the lives of those around us. And we miss out on time in communion with you. God, forgive us for all the times that our rushing and busyness has come between our relationship with you. We are so sorry. We yearn for a closer relationship with you, and I pray that we would have the strength and discipline to make our relationship with you our number one priority over all else. Almighty God, thank you for our church leaders and everyone who gives their time and talents to support and further St. Mary's ministry in and around the Horsleys. Bless them and their families, Lord, and keep them safe. We thank you for all the incredible work that June Bailey has done for our church over many years, and we pray that you would bless her abundantly. We lift up to you the Alpha course that started this week. Pray that everyone attending would come to the sessions with an open heart, that they would come to know you and of your amazing love and grace for us all. We also lift up to you our mission partner, Salvation Army. We pray for the start of their midweek activities under Rule of Six restrictions and that you would give the team wisdom and guidance as they try to work through how they can bring people together again. Thank you for all that they do, God. Heavenly Father, we pray for our government and governments around the world as they struggle and strive to find the best way forward to tackle COVID-19. God, we pray for a miracle. We pray that this deadly and devastating virus would be gone. God, may your will be done. Help us to keep our eyes on you and help us to cling on to your truth and your promises when life is hard. Our strength is in you, God. Our hope is in you. Our lives are in you. We lift up to you all those battling with COVID-19 and all those who've lost loved ones to the virus. Be their strong tower, God. Be their comfort. 
We also lift to you all those who've lost their jobs and all those who are facing job loss and serious financial difficulties due to the economic fallout of lockdown restrictions. God, I pray you would shine light into their darkness and where there seems to be no way, make a way, God. Open doors of new opportunities, new beginnings. Heavenly Father, please flood this nation, flood this world, your world, with your love, your peace, and the healing power of your name. Let us close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, we're now going to uh, share uh, communion together. As I've said many times over the last few months, uh, this isn't really the way that we would normally do it here at St. Mary's when we're uh, separated and dispersed around the village. But uh, what we're doing is still really important. So uh, here in the church, I'm going to bless the uh, elements that uh, I'm going to consume on behalf of the parish. And then as we uh, are doing this in our homes, what we're doing is celebrating a family meal, just an act of remembrance. Uh, in obedience to what Jesus uh, taught us. And so although it seems a bit informal, it's still important that we come to this with the right heart attitude. This is still a sacrament to us. It is a sacred thing for us to do when we are remembering what Jesus did on the cross uh, for us. And as you know, normally we would have what's called a communion prayer uh, but as a uh, symbolic reminder this, that this is not the normal way of doing it, I'm just going to read some verses from Scripture where uh, some of our communion liturgy comes from anyway. And uh, some of you will know that it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and it's written by St. Paul who says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever... You eat this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. So I'm going to do that now. And then in a moment, uh, there will be a little holding slide that comes up. That's your uh, opportunity to uh, take that, whether you're on your own or with family. Uh, just have a moment where we pause, remember, and give thanks for what Jesus did for us. So friends, over to you. As we come back together, we are nearing the end of our service. I want to say a big thank you to all who have played a part in helping us worship this morning. As those of you who joined us at the APCM on Tuesday will know after seeing the bloopers reel, recording for the online services is not straightforward and sometimes it takes many attempts to get it right. So thank you. And thank you too to all of you who've joined us today. We're joined together in spirit as we worship. Now before we end our service, just a few notices to share. Once again this year, we're doing the Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Appeal. 
However, we're doing it a bit differently, as we cannot come together to pack the shoeboxes. If you would like to bless a child or children who would otherwise have a very bleak Christmas, do collect one or more boxes from the church office. Instructions to fill the box are found at this website appearing now, and you will need to return it to the church office before Sunday the 1st of November so that it can be sent off in time to reach the children for Christmas Day. Now that's just two weeks away, so one way not to find yourself hurrying to complete the shoebox is to start now. So if you do plan to take part and haven't yet got your shoebox, why not commit to picking one up from the office tomorrow? Looking slightly further ahead, we're planning to hold a remembrance service in three weeks' time on Sunday the 8th of November. Further details will be given nearer the time, but for now, please mark the date in your diaries. Sunday the 8th of November. Do look out for the midweek message coming to your mailbox on Wednesday and we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday at 10 o'clock when we'll be finishing our series on ruthlessly eliminating hurry. Now let me close with a blessing before we stand to sing our final hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw each of us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.
走。